coming right there. All right, hey guys, welcome back. This week we are gonna talk about caches again. Uh, but before we do, I wanna give a shout out to this week's sponsor. You know the deal, I can't bring you these great videos for free without the uh, support of companies like this. This week I wanna thank Nutrient Survival. All right, so uh, shit, I guess it's about six months, a year ago now. We put out a video here on Tactical Rifle. You can find it in our video archive about how the military makes caches, uh, how we do a cache report, um, you know, for burying uh, just basically anything, whether it's ammo, fuel, supplies, medical gear. And the reality is we're both Green Berets. We, that part of our job overseas was to do this stuff, practicing for doing unconventional warfare. Hindsight, looking back, there were a lot of things you forgot. Yeah. right that he wanted to cover in the video but also a lot of you viewers out there because we we do read all your comments believe it or not a lot of you have asked for other things dealing with how do i cash this how do i cash that for example um if something was somebody was to literally attack my house and i had to flee my literally my own structure uh, how do I do something nearby that I could emergency get to it really, really quick? Now, you're going to know where that is, but these are when you start talking about stuff like that, those are uh, short-term caches. They are designed to be like immediately retrievable, not buried super deep, not trying to hide them from literally a insanely determined hunter with metal detectors and everything. But anyway, you know, how to stash fuel cans, how to do this, a gun case, whatever it may be, we're gonna cover a little bit of that today. Um, Randy, this first one, here's the cool part is, this time instead of us talking about digging the hole, Randy's actually hidden a few caches and I come out here this morning, he handed me, no shit, a Phillips head screwdriver, a little spade and a rope that's got a couple marks, a baby snap link and a loop at one end. Randy, what am I holding on to here? This is all he's gonna need to dig up what he needs to find the cache. This is to mark where the cache is. This is the anchor point here so he knows where to start from. When it gets to the mark that he needs, that's where his cache is. And this is all he needs to do is dig it up. This is a small cache. People are driving over every day for a week, all right? And it, I'm just showing you what you can do in places that people don't think of. So we'll get to it right now. So uh, literally our starting point is right in the center of a, where a gravel road touches a hardball road. Uh, you're, certain things don't move on a map. Uh, some, and can you change a road? Yeah, you can but literally streams will actually move over decades uh, on maps, they, they will. Trees will move, uh, but there are, there's a lot of man-made features that stay. And uh, in this case, this is brilliant. It's right in a spot. Uh, so we're gonna literally put it in basically right where uh, the hardball touches. So if you saying, hey, this is the mark on the map, when you get there, People are like, well, uh, where do I start my string at? Where do I do this? I can't believe you're making me do this. So the screwdriver is nothing more than a pin, basically. Is that all I'm using it for? Yeah, just don't pull okay. hard on it. All right, don't pull hard on it. All right, I'm going to run my string out here. Now, guys, I, I'm familiar with what Randy's doing. So for this one, you don't even need a compass. You're literally, you're gonna go right down the center of that road. Everybody thinks you gotta bury things on the edge of a road, but the reality is on a gravel road, everything, all the weight is to the side on a one lane. He literally, I'm thinking this is what Randy did. I'm gonna pull it tight. Oh, I got dirt that's been kicked up. That's not it. All right, hold on, hold on. All right. Um, there ain't a freaking thing here, Randy. Guys, this just... Bullshit. You're not supposed to be faking this stuff <laughs> for uh, YouTube. All 
No shit, you got a hole here. <laughs> All right, so Randy's already gotten down to the cache. This thing is only, uh, he's, um, how many inches deep is that? That's not very deep at all. No, because I put it in the center of the road, but uh, that's it. Nice small cache. Um, okay, how do I open this thing up? Just literally pocket well, knife? Well, uh, I put duct tape on it. Uh, we're gonna go over each cache, we'll lay them all out. But I put duct tape on it to seal it, but you can reuse the duct tape, so don't, on this, it's all right, but don't waste your duct tape. So everything is waterproofed inside in case the container breaks. Uh, there's actually moisture inside this container, so it's probably a good thing that you did that. All right, I've got um, lamp oil. Yep. I got lamp oil. I've got a headlamp. I got note paper. But that's waterproofed? Yep, waterproof. Now, when I did this, it was raining. Wow, it was raining. Wasn't yeah, it? it was raining uh, cats and dogs. So. All right, we got more Ziploc bags here. I got a. R R Randy, you're not making this easy on me. <laughs> Sorry. Holy fuck. Yeah, you got to play with that uh, compass. Sorry. What is that? That's food. Food? Yep. All right. I got that. Was, that was food. Food. Okay. Randy, I'm I'm pretty sure this thing just held a lot of water <laughs> in, dude. Okay, I okay. waterproofed everything, but you see the water still got into it. Right. What you have is you got a compass. <clears throat> You've got a mark anywhere pen. This is waterproof paper, even though that it is wet, you can still write on it. Got a headlamp so your hands are free, but it has emergency uh, blinking lights for SOS. It also has red for okay. it to see in. Survival whistle. Okay, yep. I got that. Knife sharpener. And a small multi tool. Yep. Okay. You already talked about the lamp oil. Here's a miniature candle. And here's a Bic lighter. And this would have been. <laughs> That, those were nuts, and that's a gum there for your moisture for your mouth. Instead of putting a rock in your mouth, use gum. Instead of put, nut bag, freaking nut bag. All right, uh, cache number one. Let's go find cache number two. All right, so I counted my correct number of telephone poles down. Randy says uh, it's marked. I got my fiber optic thing somewhere chest high. Uh, this is my pole. He didn't put no spray paint mark, nothing crazy. He didn't write cash from here, Carl, nothing. But he described on the cash report things for me to look for. Again, I'm going to use my pen. Uh, basically put it down in the ground. Now, I still have my trowel from before. And I, because we recovered that other cash, I have, I have my compass which I'm gonna need on this one. Randy did recommend I bring a, another bigger shovel. Uh, that's not a good sign, uh, but we'll, we'll see what we got. Uh, I'm gonna hook my, hook it on my string, just like Randy wants me to do. Now, I'm not going out to the end. Now, I know this one does not go to the end. Now, you, you can mark them with knots. Uh, that, like you'll notice, uh, another thing you can do is you can mark them with like a code. There's three right there. That's not what was on the cash report. What was on the cash report was one long black one. So I'm gonna pull out my compass. We'll lay in 280. where I want it. Ah, Randy. I can tell this thing hasn't been buried for very long. I found your, found your hole, brother. All right. All right, I'm gonna put my string down, pocket the compass. All right, I, I can see you've interrupted the dirt here now. Nope. Again, Once... these, how deep 
that's for the plow nine inches. So nine inches. So do you understand what, why he chose nine inches? This is a field. Yes, it's just grass right now because we raise it uh, to feed the cows. But let's say we were gonna, uh, a farmer rented this property and he was gonna put corn or soybeans or something like that. They come through with what's called a disc to break up the surface. Now, so even your subsurface caches, your, your shallow caches, um, you notice the one in the road, it, it needed to be deep enough to disperse the weight of the gravel. On this one here, you're gonna want to lay it right on top. I know you're gonna want, I'll just put a piece of plywood over it, that'll be good enough. If you're gonna bury anything significant for any period of time at all, you're gonna have to get down. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to put it at least nine inches so that uh, you know, the other so thing, that a farmer doesn't come through with commercial farming equipment and mess up your cash. Because if you've buried, uh, let's say, your grandfather's old uh, double barrel shotgun or your brand new medical gear or that uh, Eberstock backpack filled with all your extra go bag stuff, you really don't want that getting tilled into next month's uh, next month's crop of soybeans. Why are we putting, um, why, I already hit something. Why are we putting the dirt on there, Randy? So that I don't leave a mark where it was, I can put the dirt back into it. Okay. Now. Should I be saving my sod yeah. separate? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I usually I will use two point. different, but we're just being quick about this. I use two different um, tarps, one to put the top sod on, and right. when I do bury it, I take water because it's got greenage and yep. I'll wet it down so that um, I don't kill the grass. I picked this particular spot, guys. Well, God, that's really easy to find. I didn't want to tear up his good field. This is already a bad spot, and that's why I chose it. Yeah, okay. I like the pole. Um, it was in a good location. And this is these are real caches, and I didn't want to... Uh, bury this puppy down the road here where someone else could run into it by accident because these are real caches. I have PVC pipe. Now, if you remember on the other video, there I told you about string. Yep. putting your string on there because you got to pull this bad pup up. I'm not where I can get it up yet, but I'm getting close. I just gotta be able to free one end of it and then it'll pull up. Now, guys, I'll talk about equipment that you need to do this with. And I didn't put the seal on it because it was gonna be a pain in the neck for us to get it off, okay? But uh, if top. you'll notice, I marked top. That's kind of important so because both sides would be sealed so you know what end that you're going to operate on. And I put Vaseline on it so we could pull this off easy. So now, Yeah, like, he, like Randy mentioned, if you want to see how to properly seal these things, make them, all that stuff, I encourage you to go back to our first cache video. You can find it in our video archive on our, this same YouTube channel. Pull it up. I've got uh, 38 special. Oh, that's a bunch of boxes. Dry. These dry. are dry. All right, um, charcoal briquettes in here. Uh, and ash from my grill. Why do we put that in there, Randy? We the put that in there because if for some reason this gets breached, bugs like to go in there and bugs don't like ash. So I always dump ash in and I put in um, that's a 357, 357 with uh, revolver with a holster with a, another multi-tool. Why? Because you're a nut bag. Yep. Cool part about 357 is we saw the ammo here looking at both ends. That's 38 special. That's 38 special. That one's uh, 357. Um, both those rounds both fit inside of a 357 pistol. Uh, so I know I got a pistol now. Oh. All right, that's looking to me like uh, I need to cut the plastic open.
we're rough on stuff, aren't we, Randy? Yeah. It All right, so it you had pretty. to flee. You had to go whatever. Are you going to have your favorite TR1 rifle buried out in the yard? No, you're not. But uh, what you can have is a firearm that you're familiar with. Gun sock. I don't want to cut that, Randy. You're supposed to put. He, ah, he did it. He put yep. buddy tabs on the. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I. You put buddy tabs on it. I'll give you I that. I didn't screw my buddy. All right. I don't want to tear up Randy's gun sock here. That gun sock will be soaked down with silicone spray, guys. Uh, and so will the. If you notice the pistols in a sock, and it'll be sprayed down with silicone spray to make sure even if moisture gets in there, it won't damage your metal parts. All right, so don't forget to do that. Lever action gun, flashlight works. And she's empty. All right, so this cache right here, we've got Got a nice warm silicone covered scarf. I got a ton of ammo that will fit this rifle and this pistol. And I, I want you to note uh, presence of mind to put a holster in there with it. Otherwise, uh, you're trying to just carry this thing. All right, Randy, um, that's good. I'll come back, I'll fill this in. All right, hey, um, we got one more cache to go, right? One more? One Randy? more. All right, and uh, let's head that way. All right, so I'm walking trees on the edge of the pond here, and because uh, Randy's a prick, he's hit it. The tree's been marked with three slash marks, and of course, he's not going to mark the tree. He said it's about one foot off the ground, which sounded great when I was back in the man room. One foot off the ground is basically trigger central, but um, ah, Randy, you are you're a total prick, dude. <laughs> All right, I have one, two, three marks, guys. Nobody would have seen this shit before, nobody. Um, okay, fine, whatever. I'm gonna put my pen, get my string out. You. There's a root there, so you'll oh, find just past the root. You are an asshole. All right. Uh, you got to go out just far enough. I'm going to just let my string out. Now, technically, uh, he could have gone the other side of the tree closer to the water line. Um, Normally you don't want to do that because waters rise and lower in a pond depending on rainfall. And uh, so a good slope of the hill, sloping of a hill is good for shallow caches uh, simply because it's going to drain better. You, you don't have to worry about your hole uh, becoming a swimming pool. All right, I've got my three marks. All right, that leaves me with my compass. I'll take the shovel. All right, compass. I want 320 for this one. Now guys, uh, you, you work out your technique for your caches because I'm not telling you whether we're doing uh, back azimuth, azimuth, plus this, plus that. That's your own individual SOP. Literally, I'm, I'm on it already. I'm literally on it already. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to put away my tarp here, or my compass rather. Got my piece of sod. We'll save that. Ah, another piece of sod. Ah, we'll save that. And then uh, the rest is all basically just dirt. More sod. Yeah, it's all right now. Well, Carl, why are you burying it? We, uh, you know, we. I just want something that's on the surface so I can pick up a board. No, guys, take 
literally, we're already there. We're literally already at the cash. By you taking the time and going nine inches deep, somebody coming through in this field, uh, just like out hiking, hitting your piece of plywood because you didn't take the time to bury it, uh, they're, they're gonna know it's there. An animal's gonna step on it and go, hey, what's that? That's potential den of food. They're gonna dig it up. Go nine inches down. It's still shallow, guys. You didn't have to dig for hours and hours and hours. All right, there we go. Got a bucket handle. All right. Uh. Oh. All right. All right. Um, regular bucket. Do you need to use military grade uh, uh, buckets, uh, containers, ammo cans? No, you can. Can you use a, uh, if you want it shallow, you could use a pelican case. Just use an old one and remember that the, they have a valve in them for changing air pressure when you're going up uh, flying on aircraft. Make, you got to seal all that stuff off. This was just meant to be short term, right, Randy? Yes. You would yeah. still seal this properly, and then this has got a—it's got a gasket on the inside. But I would still uh, flex seal the shit out of it. He added more charcoal briquettes and grill ash to the outside, keep the bugs out. But also understand this ash absorbs moisture. The charcoal absorbs moisture. Just pull all that shit out. All right. And uh, Randy, you're a freaking nutbag. You know that? Right. I know, but you love me. I do love you. All right, we have got a uh, water bladder. How many quarts is that, Randy? Uh, that is quarts. That's like, it's two gallons. So That's uh, trash bags, why you never have enough trash bags. Uh, another holster, which means I've probably got another blaster in here. Uh, yeah. 20, nine shot 22. Nine shot 22, which means I better have some 22 ammo in here. All right. Um, damn, dude, that's a solar charger. Yep. Solar charger. All right, I've got, uh, I've got food, hand sanitizer, uh, drugs, a uh, headlamp, a uh, small first aid kit, rubber gloves, and of course, just in case, the the mask quarantine comes back. Randy added I, a couple masks. I threw in that there. in there. Sorry, guys. Couldn't Camouflage jacket, uh, multi cam, or those pants? Pants? Yeah, multi cam, right. yep, the other pants. All right. Uh, tin foil. Everybody forgets tin foil. This is the unsung hero of survival world, guys. You can make pots to boil water in with tin foil. Tin foil is priceless, thousand uses for tin foil. Ah, a whole brick of 22 ammo. The, that's, Man, that's even wild. That's what cat. this that's is on here. Stuff. That's got ammo in it. Cool. Very, very cool. You put a bunch of chem lights in here. Uh, another knife. Who makes this one, man? Uh, Voodoo. Nice. It's very that's tough. Sexy. Very tough. And you notice he already put the loops on it, so you can basically put it on any any kind of belt. Got another SOG. Uh, that's multi -tool. a multi-tool. That's that weird one. Yep. You love that thing, don't you? I know you do. Uh, that's your uh, sharpener. Uh, sharpener. There's another one. With it's another speedy brand. sharp. Speedy, speedy sharp, sharp works but, the same way as this one. But they're okay. better. But they're better. Yeah. All uh, right. Chocolate mints. Nope. That's candles. Uh, it's a candle. Lighters. Um, that's a, a binoculars. Binoculars. See how small that set of binoculars are, guys. You're trying to E and E. You're trying to escape, evade. Wouldn't a nice small set of optics? Wouldn't that just be totally badass to have, guys? That takes zero space at all. This said, chocolate mints on it. Randy has <laughs> never had a mint in his life. The dragon <laughs> himself doesn't do mints. Every container you see, uh, Randy t saves these containers. Three wick candle. Um, he could, you need to do a video on how to make candles because yeah. he used to melt them in like his wife's good pots. Yeah, don't do that anymore. One, one, one time, time only. <laughs> one time only. Fire starting, nothing's better than Randy's candle right there. Guys, so literally, uh, wow, it keeps going, all right? We've got lamp oil um, because there's no cheating building a fire, yep. there's no cheating in survival. Uh, this is water, it's an yep. old apple juice bottle. Uh, completely dry. He's got two uh, tactical riflemen MREs. 
Yes. From uh, yep. MRE Nation. What, what kind did you get me, dude? Chicken gumbo and beef stew. Man, we are rough. Oh, yeah. We are rough. Oh, yeah. It. And then last but not least, what's this one? Gun oil. More gun oil. Okay, our gun oil. Awesome. Um, guys, this is awesome. This is easy. Didn't take long for us to get to. Could I find that in the dark? Good thing I had a headlamp in that first uh first cache otherwise there's no way i would have seen those three marks you freaking you monkey to, you have to plan that out okay it goes in consistent the things that you might use to find your other ones but remember guys uh it was well i don't need to do this because it's going to be me putting this in and me finding my own stuff the reality is is you may not have warning to put this stuff out three days before the said attack or calamity happens. So if you start putting this stuff out now, right, uh, years down the road, it's like, man, I, you know, I do not even remember where that is. Do the cash report on each one of these, a separate cash report. Uh, and we get into all that in that previous video. You can find that in our video archive. We get into how deep to do them, certain considerations, satellite imagery, all kinds of other stuff. Um, but uh, legitimately, just make sure if you're doing caches like that, when you're putting them in, don't bring your cell phone with you. Nothing. You leave the cell phone back because literally they can walk the breadcrumbs on your cell phone straight to where your caches were. Vehicles have got GPSs in them. They can walk the breadcrumbs that your GPS and your vehicle left. Uh, but uh, take the time, put the consideration into this. If your house or your shed burns to the ground for whatever reason, uh, electrical fire, lightning, Antifa, whatever it was, uh, you were, do you want to lose everything and have to start from scratch? Nah, sprinkle that stuff all over the place. I'm all on, this is all on our own property. This is my property. We're not doing nothing crazy, nothing illegal. I can store stuff anywhere I want. Uh, Randy, last words for this video. The okay, reason I put this um, solar panel in there, this lights charges by the solar panel and there's a lighter in here that charges by the solar panel. Yep. So now I've got light uh, anytime I want to get it charged up and my electric lighter can light up uh, thousands and thousands of times so I'm not out. So that's why it's put in there. And you could do your cell phone too, but I don't care the cell phone. I do. I, I love my personal computer. That's all we got. Again, this is part two. If you want to see the full length video, we get in depth. We do. We, we got all the way into cash reports and everything. You can find that video in our vehicle archive. Big shout out again to our sponsors of this video. And uh, you guys know the deal. Leave the comments below. We read them all. We do. We don't always respond to some of you monkeys out there. But if it's a legitimate question, we usually respond to you. Uh, that's all I got. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.